that they don't have to destroy property to be had. I want them to know that members of parliament are free to exercise their voting right. And should anyone have a problem with a member of parliament for a certain decision that he or she has made, you'll have an opportunity in the next general election to express your displeasure. Most of those offices that have been touched are public offices put up with the public funds. It's very, very unfortunate. The violence witnessed across the country was unnecessary and uncalled for because violence begets violence. It is unfortunate that it had to get to this. Dialogue is critical to avert similar occurrences in the future. It is now time for restraint and diffraction to avoid recurrence of these unfortunate and unprecedented events. The decision by our president this evening to withdraw the finance bill after listening to the people of Kenya is the new beginning that should nurture the culture of consultation and engagement. <clears throat> The president in his own admission has listened to the people and admitted there was a problem that the people were opposed to the bill in its entirety. It is also the beginning of acknowledging that there is a disconnect between the people and their government. I really want to thank the president for listening to the people as he should be. The president, myself, and elected leaders are servants of the people. Going forward, this should be the norm, listening to the people. I'm on record for the last three months of asking leaders to listen to the ground. And I'm happy that my boss, my president, has listened to the people of Kenya. As a truthful and honest man, I must acknowledge that we must engage Generation Z and other young people and all Kenyans, including the church, business community on critical issues facing them. It seems that either we have not listened enough or we have not communicated our intentions effectively, yet many have voiced their concerns. I would like to take this opportunity to ask our leaders to stop the culture of castigating the people with different views and opinions. It is time for leaders to tone down and stop the habit of talking down to the people. And this brings me to the critical issue why I've called this press conference. As Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, I and President William Ruto were on the ballot and were given a mandate by the people of Kenya directly. I am an elected Deputy President, I'm not appointed. I therefore have a responsibility to the people of Kenya and that responsibility is informed by my belief that honesty and truth are critical components of leadership. We have lost lives, property destroyed, anarchy, fear, uncertainty, how did we get here? How did we get here? We were just elected the other day as a very popular government. Where did the rain begin to beat us? Where did we stop listening to the people? President William Ruto and I were the darling of the Kenyan people by listening to them, by engaging them. And as a government, we have established institutions to ensure we not only listen to Kenyans, but also genuinely understand their concerns. We invest significant resources in these institutions, particularly the National Intelligence Service for this purpose. It is clear there has been a failure in the intelligence and advice we are receiving, particularly concerning crucial government policies. 
the President of the Republic of Kenya today has admitted that it has come to his attention that the people of Kenya did not want anything to do with the Finance Bill 2024. The President has now agreed that we need to listen to the people. And I sympathize with my boss, President William Ruto, because this information was not available to him. I know President William Ruto. Had he known two months ago that the people of Kenya did not want anything to do with the Finance Bill 2024, he would not have asked his parliamentary party to push it through. Yet, we have an organization paid by the public to give him and government such information. And that is where the problem is. We have a dysfunctional national intelligence service that has exposed the president, the government, and the people of Kenya. Had the national intelligence service briefed the president two months ago about how the people of Kenya feel about the Finance Bill 2024, so many Kenyans would not have died. Property would not have been destroyed. Offices would not have been touched. There would have been no mayhem. But they slept on the job. It had to take people to die. Property to be destroyed. Protests across the country for the president to know the truth of what the people of Kenya feel. Yet, there is an organization paid for by the public to brief the president and the government about the feeling of the Kenyan people. Officers of the National Intelligence Service, have, of officers of the National Police Service have told me in confidence they did not get advanced intelligence briefs about the magnitude of the protest in Eldoret, in Kericho, in Nairobi, in Gedurai, in Embu, in Nyeri. Since independence, there has been protests in, around parliament. Never have protesters invaded and gotten inside parliament. Senior officers have told me in confidence they did not have an advanced intelligence brief about the intensity of the protests so that they prepare in advance. The National Intelligence Service slept on the job. And the problem is simple. The Director General of the National Intelligence Service, Nurdin Haji, was a junior officer in the National Intelligence Service before he was appointed as DPP. When he was appointed to the office of the Director General, because of inferiority complex, he chased away all the people who were senior to him when he was in the service. They are for crippling the capacity of that service and making it dysfunctional. Three directors were chased away and reassigned to desk jobs in ministries across government. Thirteen assistant directors, men and women with proven track record of intelligence collection and analysis, were removed from the National Intelligence Service, leaving a shell under a clueless director general who has no capacity to run the organization. And that is why the security sector was caught off guard by the intensity, the anger of the Kenyan people, the agitation of the Kenyan people, the lessons of the Kenyan people. Had Nuddin Haji done his job, we will not be where we are today. He has no capacity. He is out of the country most of the time on business trips. The country is on his own. My boss president, William Mutua, is exposed that he has to back down and admit that he has hurt the people of Kenya. Yet this matter has been in public domain for the last two months. I want to say that Nuddin Haj must take responsibility for the deaths that occurred. He must take responsibility for the mayhem. He must take responsibility for failing President William Ruto. 
He must take responsibility for failing the government of the Republic of Kenya. He must take responsibility for failing the Kenyan nation by not doing his job and advising correctly. And he must do the honorable thing, not just take responsibility, but resign from that office and allow the president to pick a competent director general. I want to request President William Ruto to consider as a matter of urgency to recall the three directors who are removed from the service and the 13 assistant directors to come and help reconstruct the service and get sanity back to the National Intelligence Service to serve the president, the government, and the people of Kenya. President William Ruto deserves best, better. He deserves a director general who knows what he's doing. He deserves a national intelligence service that is effective and that can analyze situations and keep him and the government informed on what is going on. It is embarrassing to me as deputy president that it has taken protests, deaths, mayhem, destruction for the president to know the truth, yet there is an organization charged with that responsibility. I have publicly stated that under this administration, Kenyans are free to criticize the government without fear of reprisal and state agencies. This was a promise made by both the president and I when we were sworn in. I want to call upon overzealous heads of security agencies not to be tempted to use a criminal justice system to manage politics. Let us manage politics the conventional way through reaching out, consensus and concurrence. I am informed that members of parliament who voted no have already been targeted by the National Intelligence Service for harassment for their political stand. This is a promise the President and I gave to the people of Kenya that never again shall we use the criminal justice system to manage politics. I want to say that the President and I gave a categorical promise to the people of Kenya that the issue of, of abductions and extrajudicial killings will never happen again. Sadly, this is back. It is unbelievable that the son of the Honorable Attorney General of Kenya, Justin Bidan Muturi, was abducted at night in a commando style by officers of the National Intelligence Service and held in communicado for 18 hours. Yet, that is the Honorable Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya. What will happen to other Kenyans? I want to ask our law enforcement agencies to dignify the president and I before the people of Kenya and not backtrack on the promises we made to the people of Kenya that we shall never again use the criminal justice system to manage politics. Yesterday, Nudin Haji was trying to put up a team together to craft lies and propaganda and attribute the chaos that were in the country to lead us, I included former President Uhuru Kenyatta and others. Yet it is very clear, and the President has admitted, that these protests were caused by the anger of the people of Kenya and the refusal of Finance Bill 2024. I want to call on the National Intelligence Service not to take us back to the dark old days of the Nyayo era, where you create propaganda and schemes to undermine leaders and those you don't agree with. I want to say in conclusion, <clears throat> this is a time for reflection and action. And we need to take immediate steps, as the President has guided, and I'm very happy, to engage the Generation Z. And I want to call that generation to tell us whom to engage because they are leaderless, they are tribeless, they have no organizational structure, but we would like to engage the right people. There could be a, a temptation among some young people around us in government to pick some friends of theirs and attempt to bring them for discussion. So I want to challenge our young people and salute them for their courage and conviction and the love for their motherland to come up with a structure on how they can engage government in accordance with what President William Ruto has guided this afternoon.
in view of the very wise decision by the president in conformity with the wishes of the Kenyan people to withdraw Finance Bill 2024 that was in contention. As Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya and a patriotic son of this country, I want to appeal to Generation Z to call off the protests for tomorrow because their cry has been heard by the President. The President has accepted that there was an issue, there was a disconnect, and the President has done the right thing. And I think it's only fair that we call off the protest so that we don't have further loss of lives and destruction of property. It's an appeal that I have made as a father, as a parent, to our young children. We love you, we respect you. Please, I beseech you as your father, now that the President has given in and accepted to go with the wishes of the Kenyan people, please, my sons and daughters, I plead with you to save lives, to save bloodshed, to save loss of property and lives. My sons, my daughters, please make an announcement this evening and call off the protest. And then we can begin the process of truthful engagement with the Kenyan people. We can begin an honest conversation on how to work on our country. Finally, I want to ask the President and our government to consider a plan on how to help those families that lost their livelihoods as a result of lack of proper advice by the National Intelligence Service. All these things happened because of government failure. It should never happen. Let us see how to compensate those families, those who are dead. We help those who are in hospital with bills, and we help to bury them. Again, I want to ask Kenyans not to punish members of parliament for the stand that they took. A government is formed by a political party. Once a government has a program in parliament and decides it is good for the people, members of parliament from that party must toe the line. I don't want you to punish our members of parliament. They just did what is right in terms of our political formation. Allow them to be. Allow them to support their government because that's why they were elected as members of the government party. Let us not harass them. Let us not abuse them. Let us not attack their properties. They were just doing what the government wanted. And now that the government has decided to do the right thing, I think we should close that chapter. And if you have a problem with your member of parliament over this matter or any other matter, you will have an opportunity at the right time to punish that member of parliament or affirm he or her by electing him or her. And if we do that, it will be good for this country. Finally, I also want to ask the president to consider the issues of the demolitions of houses along Nairobi River Houses that had approved building plans built on land with title deed were demolished and only a composition of 10,000 was given, which is unacceptable and unfair. Let us consider any landowner who had a genuine title, who had constructed a house that had been approved by the city authorities for composition, because it's good to be fair. I really want to thank you and ask the people of Kenya to keep peace and to love one another. Now that this matter of Finance Bill 2024 has been settled, let us all go back to work. Let us be peaceful. Let us not be violent. Let us not talk at each other. Let's try to love one another. We have a